so I'm going to talk to you today about um, setting goals and, and how setting goals have really, really transformed my business. Um, but before I um, go into that, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. So uh, my background's in the corporate world. So I worked for a company called Lloyd's CSB Insurance. And I was in that career for nine years. And I always tried to climb the corporate ladder. I knew I always wanted to be successful, but things just went a bit pear-shaped for me because I ended up being quite successful but not having any family balance or any life balance, really. So um, I was looking for a change, and I started my business seven years ago. I still can't believe it's been seven years because I still get the same amount of excitement every morning when I wake up. Um, but seven years ago, I started my business. Now. I was a bit of a slow burner in my business, if I'm honest with you. I didn't do anything particularly quick. It took me two years to get to manager. And I think that the reason why it took me two years to get to manager is because, well, it's quite simple, I didn't do anything um, <laughs> for the first two years of my business. I did do a lot of moaning. Um, and blaming and you know not taking responsibility but when it comes to actually work and activity that build your business I didn't actually do anything um, it took me six months to recruit my first team member and it was a real strange way that I recruited her I didn't actually recruit her I don't even deserve the recognition because she came to me and said I want to join your team and I went well it's 200 pounds mind because I was so shocked that she wanted to join and part with 200 pounds. And um, she said, yeah, I know. And I thought, well, I don't quite know what to do now. Um, oh, dear. So I registered her. And then I kind of decided that actually I need to get a bit serious now because, you know, if she's joining my team, I'm now a leader, so I need to kind of show her what to do. So I need to really do something myself so I know what to show her. Um, so, you know, the fact was is I wasn't really doing anything that I needed to do. And the reason why I wasn't doing anything that I needed to do is because I didn't have any goals. Not goals that I was connected to anyway. You see, I wasn't used to setting goals. I wasn't around anybody who would ever set goals. So it was really alien to me. Um, I remember my first goal setting session that I had in my first planning meeting and I think I just sat there and talked about all the things that I thought that my sponsor wanted me to achieve or thought that what I wanted, I said all the things that I thought she wanted to hear which wasn't right and it was because I just didn't know what I wanted. I think I did deep down, but you see, I had a bad mindset and it was a bad mindset of stuff like that doesn't happen to people like me. See, I was brought up in quite an amazing environment of love and happiness, and, and my family was so, uh, are and always have been so supportive, but we didn't really have much growing up. You know, we struggled, and all I can remember seeing is mum and dad struggling and paying the bills. As much as they tried to keep it from us, you know, we knew that we were struggling. And I just assumed that that's what life was supposed to be because my aunties and uncles also struggled. My grandparents struggled and I just thought that was life. You know, I just thought that that is the way life was. And what I didn't realize that I realize now is that I thought that struggling was a normal way of life because of the years and years of conditioning. That's what I was brought up with. But what was really ironic for me is that at an early age, I always knew that I wanted to be something different. I always wanted something more. I didn't want to be the mum that, that my children could see struggling. Sorry. Hang on. Um, and so what was really ironic is that I always wanted an amazing life. And that's why I joined Forever, because I could see an amazing life. But my bad mindset took over, and I just didn't think that it was going to happen. For me, I just didn't have any self-belief whatsoever. Then I learned how to set goals, um, and you know, my business was stagnant for so so long because I didn't know how to set goals. Um, and what was happening is that I didn't know how to set goals, so therefore my team didn't know how to set goals because they follow the leader. So. I also had no self-belief whatsoever. I didn't have any belief, so they didn't have any belief either. So 
you know, I had to show them how to set goals, but I wasn't doing it myself. So something needed to change, and it was a moment in my life that changed, and it was that we used to have this incentive called Manager's Retreat. Um, and we went to manager's retreat. It was always incredible. And I think I remember the session was goal setting. And I just sat and cried for about four hours. I just couldn't stop crying over and over. And you know what? It, I wasn't re crying ridiculously because um, of the goal setting. I was crying because it was the first time sat in that room that I believed that I could. And I believed that I could have something more. And I just believed, you know, just thought, why not me? And I sobbed <laughs> for hours. Um, you see, I didn't set goals because I didn't believe that I could achieve them. So I thought that I was um, always going to set myself up for failure. So I was really afraid of putting it down on paper because I thought, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to set myself up for failure. And you know what? We're all more alike than different because there are probably people, actually, I guarantee you, there are people in this room today that feel exactly the same way. They want it and you want it so, so, so bad, but that lack of belief is holding you back. So. The, probably the same things happening to you that happened to me. You'll make excuses. You'll start telling yourself, I don't want that kind of life anyway. I'm quite happy with what I've got. You know, why would I want any more? I don't want to be greedy. Some of the other excuses I had, well, do you know what? It's okay. I live in Wales. You know, we don't build businesses like this in Wales. It's absolutely fine. I'll just stick to what I've got. But the reality was, I wasn't happy. I was living in £35,000 worth of debt. I was literally eating and living off eight pence smart price super noodles from Asda's because that's all I could afford to put in my tummy. I couldn't afford to eat anything else. So times were really, really tough. But because of my lack of belief, I just told myself I was happy with the way things were. But you know what? No, it's not okay. Because we are not put on this earth to struggle. We are put on this earth to be individuals. We are so lucky, and I don't take it for granted that I've been put on this earth as a human being at the point, at the fact that I have the chance to ch and the choice to change my direction in an instant. We are so lucky that we are here as humans, because a dog can only just be a dog, a cat can only be a cat. We have the choice. If you're unhappy about something, change it. If life isn't going the way things are, change it. We have the choice. And I don't take that lightly, and neither should you. See, if someone said to you, um, you know, you've won the lottery, you'd have a list as long as you arm of things that you would want, wouldn't you? What would you do for your family? Where would you live? What holiday home would you be having? Where would you be traveling? We would have all that. So why is it then that we treat our life and our goals as if we haven't won the lottery? Why can't we treat it like as if we have? And it's because of that belief. It's that lack of belief. You see, you can't see it yet, and that's the problem. And then you have to do the work for it to then materialize. So I challenge you just literally five minutes in the mindset as if you've won the lottery. Throw everything else off. Have a mindset just for five minutes that you can have and be anything that you want without that gremlin on the side of your shoulder taking it off, telling you how ridiculous you are. Because we all have that, that gremlin on the side of our shoulder. Every single person, even the top 30 business owners you would have seen go across the stage today, they would have had that at some point. They probably do. But it's the, the difference between them is that they choose to ignore it. And it's that thing again, isn't it? You have the choice. So empty your mind. Put everything down that you want. And then just go to work and achieve it. You have more chance of working towards your goals than you do have leaving your life to chance and winning the lottery. So let's just work towards them. Put those goals down. Don't leave your life to chance. Make it happen. See, I believe the secret to success is setting goals. And I believe that the secret to setting goals is belief. Belief in you, but also, really importantly, the belief in other people as well. And you see, for me, goal setting became really, really easy when I just believed in myself. 
and it will for you too. Now, if this is your mindset or this is the way that you talk to yourself like I did, stuff like that doesn't happen to people like me, remove it straight away from your thoughts, pretty sharpish, because I can tell you that it does. It does. Stuff like this, big stuff can happen to just ordinary people, because why not you? I'm living proof of it, you know? Um, and I'm really passionate about that, that if I can do it, or if you see anybody across this stage, you can do it too. And the only thing that will hold you back is that belief. So start working on what your limiting beliefs are. Start thinking about the things that are holding you back. And start, you know, changing your conditioning over life. Start being really self-aware. Think of the things that are holding you back and change it and start telling yourself that I can and I will. It doesn't happen overnight. It's something that you will need to work on, probably the rest of your forever journey, because you're going to be something different. And to be something different, you have to think in a different way. You have to tell yourself that you can. So no one is ever the finished article. You'll always have belief challenges along the way, but it's how you deal with those belief challenges um, that is the important thing. And you know what? It's really, really important to borrow somebody else's belief in you until you're done working on believing in yourself. And I can say that's the biggest tip that I can give you because that's what I did. I just didn't believe in me, but someone else did. But I allowed them to believe in me, and there's a difference. And tell your team to borrow their belief in you as well because we all need somebody to say those magic words. And those magic words are looking at somebody deadpan in the eyes and coming from a place of complete and utter, you know, um, belief and saying, I totally believe in you. You say that to your team and you see what happens. So when I then learned to believe, um, it was then literally, to put it quite simple, getting a grip and just getting out of my own way, to be honest with you, because I'd identified it, I could now move forward. And these are the beautiful boys that um, helped the magic happen for me. You know, I started to realize what was important, and it wasn't the fast cars, it wasn't the shoes, it wasn't the handbags. They're amazing, I wouldn't give them back, of course, <laughs> but it wasn't those things. It was the memories, it was creating the memories. I've created memories for my family that they would never have been able to create. I took my sister and my mum to New York last year business class and put them in a five-star hotel. They never would have the chance to fly in business class, but I made that happen for them. And the memory that we've got for the three of us going on holiday together and having those experiences is incredible. It was the memories that are important. And when I realized that, um, I was able to go to town on working on my goals. And you'll probably find that a lot of your goals might not be the fast cars, the big stuff, even though it is lovely, it's something that's a bit more emotionally connected. I can't take my car with me, you know, to the grave. I can't take my shoes. I will, actually. <laughs> um, you know, but you, um, you can take those memories, you know, and that's the thing that's really important. So the first of my memory making, there's been a lot, was when I, four years ago, understood the importance of the set and the goals, and that was my huge goal to take these beautiful boys to Lapland to see Father Christmas. And this picture sums it up to me. This, my youngest nephew, Riley, this was his reaction when I told him I was taking him to Lapland to meet the real Father Christmas. How could I even fail? You just can't. And then I picked him up from school and his teacher said, that's great that Riley's going to see Father Christmas in Lapland. And I thought, oh man, I better make this happen now. You know, and he was so excited. I was literally connected. You know, um, so what is going to connect you? What makes your heart bleed? What gives you that burning desire of literally whatever it takes? I would do whatever it takes. And I did. And this picture was on my goal board every single day. And I looked at it every single day. And I cried every single day. And it was not because I was sad. And it was not because 
I didn't think that I was going to do it, all the hard work that I had to do to do it. Um, it was because I actually believed that I could. Because I told myself and I was not letting those boys down. So in that process in 2012, when I really, really um, took that goal setting seriously. Now, I set this goal of taking the boys to Lapland and I was earning about £800 per month. I could have told myself I can't do it, but my mindset was I'm having it, I'm doing it. My self-talk was right. And in that process, I probably couldn't even afford to pay my bills at that time. But in six months, I took my income from 800 to 6,000 pounds just from focusing on that goal, that meaningful goal. I was literally unstoppable, laser focused. It was happening. And that's what... And that is what a tunnel vision and a laser-like focus will do for you when you have that goal that you can totally, totally connect to. So is goal setting powerful? I think so, because that income was beyond my wildest dreams. And I actually didn't just able to pay for the two boys to come to Lapland, I paid for the whole family to come. So we were all able to have those memories together. So talk to yourself in the right way. You know, why not you, why not now? Just believe, just have that belief. You know, the reason why we find it so hard to goal set is because of our self-esteem. I genuinely believe that. It's how we view ourselves. It's what we believe we are worthy of. So talk to yourself a little nicer. You know, and I want you to do something. I want you to think about, we all do it, all the horrible, horrible things that you say to yourself. Think of the things you might have said to yourself this morning. And then just ask yourself the question, these horrible things I'm saying to myself, would I say that to a best friend? Think of the things when you really sit there and you go to town at running yourself down. Ask yourself, would I say this to my best friend? And the, if the answer is no, then don't say it to yourself. Because if you don't praise yourself, who's going to? You know, if you're not going to love yourself, who's going to love you? You are your best friend for a long, long time, for the rest of your life, and you are your best friend. So be kind to yourself and start talking to yourself nicely and start telling yourself that you can. You are a champion and you can have amazing things. So write a list of all the things that, this is what I did, I wrote a list about all the things that I used to tell myself that were bad about myself. And then what I just started to do is I flipped them. And instead of saying them negatively about myself, I started to say them positively. So this is a ridiculous example. But one of the things is I thought people wouldn't take me seriously because I was short and I looked young. So I used to just tell myself, I am tall. I am a champion. People are going to take me seriously. So I took the negative and I flipped it. So if you're kind of thinking, how am I going to start with this changing of my bad self-talk, start with that. Write down all the things that you think negatively and flip it and tell yourself the positive version of that every single day. If you start telling yourself something enough, then you will start to believe it, I promise you. So just give yourself a break. So that's some of the kind things you can say to yourself. You're amazing. You are good enough. You're worth it. I wake up every morning and I've got a mantra. And this mantra I've been doing since 2012. And I will share it with you. Some of you already know it. I wake up every morning and I say to myself, even now, I can and I will. Failure is not an option. Come on, champion. Let's get to work. How many lives am I going to change today? And I start, I skip, do a little skip, and I start my day <laughs> really right. You cannot start the day in a bad way, even if I sometimes stub my toe when I'm tip, skipping across the room. I'm still happy, you know? You take charge of the day, not let the day take charge of you. So then just to round up with some of my top tips is that work on you, you know, be aware of what is holding you back so you can change it. Let other people believe in you. Some people might find that quite hard to do, but just get over yourself. Let someone believe in you. You believe in you, believe in other people. 
talk to yourself in the right way, tell yourself you can, talk to yourself in the positive affirmations every day, emotionally connect to your goals, create a plan, you know, your goals won't work without a plan, create really good habits and never, ever, ever, ever give up. Because before I set that goal, I nearly gave up. And it makes me so emotional to think, what on earth? What would my life be like if I had given up in 2012? And I just look at the life I've created for my little boy and I just think, wow. So. I'll leave you with that amazing quote and I just want you to go out there and dream big. You know, you can and you will. Failure is not an option. And you really, really, really can have it all. So go and grab it. Thank you.